Hey everybody, Tony with 319 Photography, 319photography.com. Welcome to a tutorial about how to edit your Milky Way photos in Lightroom. But first, I gotta talk about the band-aid on my face. In the great words of Emperor Palpatine, the attempt on my life has left me scarred and deformed. In reality, apparently, this is the first day I've ever used a razor while shaving. So you'll have to excuse it. But let's jump into talking about how to edit your photo in Lightroom. So I'm gonna jump right into Lightroom here. And what you see here is I've got a image from Big Bend National Park. Uh, and I am actually gonna start this off by stitching three images together in a panorama. So these three images here, 23, 24, and 25, uh, if you've never stitched a panorama in Lightroom, uh, they just recently updated it. It's a lot easier uh, now. It was easier before, but it's even easier now. So as long as you select these three images here in your film strip, and you come up to Photo, and you go down to Edit In, or I'm sorry, Photo Merge, and then you go to click Panorama, it's going to bring up some options here for you. It'll give you spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. And you can see kind of what the effect gives on each one of those. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to use perspective. And you can take your boundary warp and just drive it all the way up to, to 100. That usually always works well with my photos when I stitch them in panoramas. Um, I never mess with auto crop, auto settings, or create stack. And when you're ready, pick the option that works for you. Go ahead and click merge. You'll see it adds it up into the creating panorama toolbar and it will create the panorama. All right, now that that's done, our panorama is complete, and here it is. So this is straight out of camera. And those three images, even though I combined them together, they were taken at ISO 5000 at a 20 millimeter focal length and an aperture of f1.4 uh, for eight second exposure. You can see that information up here right underneath the histogram. Guys, this was taken on a Sony A7R 3 with a Sigma R 20 millimeter lens. Stunning lens. Stunning body combination for doing astro landscape photography. All right, so let's jump into this. On the right hand side, you have all of your control panels for editing your photograph. Uh, first thing that I am going to look at is I'm going to adjust the temperature. So these, this hoodoo and these rocks, I lit these on scene and the rocks have a, a very reddish orange color. That's, you know, even a, more accentuated by the fact it's a long exposure. So I'm gonna take my temperature slider and you can slide it or you can type in a number. I have to know that I'm gonna go down to about 5,300 just to see where that, that gets me. So I'll type in 5,300 and you can see it's not necessarily cool enough for my liking. So I need to drop down a little bit more. So I'm gonna go down to 4,600 and yeah, now we're starting to get there. Okay, so the reddish orange hues and the rocks have been subdued. The Milky Way is, is looking pretty good. Um, I'm ready to, to start making some other global adjustments, okay? So when I start messing with the sliders for exposure, contrast, any of these sliders over here, um, understand that I'm working with global edits right now. So everything that I do is going to edit every bit of the photograph, right? Not just the foreground, not just the sky. Underneath your main sliders, you've got your tone curve. We'll talk about that in a second. And you've also got the HSL hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, which breaks up hue, saturation, and luminance as three different things. And you can kind of edit the, the colors uh, within those color channels, okay? Again, with the fact that we're doing global adjustments, uh, I'm going to affect the image globally. So just to give you an example of this, if I take the orange slider here, which is a pretty prevalent uh, color channel in this image, and I start to reduce it, 
the saturation of it, man, you can see how much the orange channel affects the entire image. And of course, if I increase it, you can see that things get, things get weird, quick, fast, in a hurry. So I caution you on using those. Just remember that it, they are global adjustments. So small adjustments, small adjustments when it comes to global adjustments. When you get down to the detail portion, split toning, don't worry about, but underneath that detail. Uh, so the sharpening, there's a masking slider on the sharpening. Uh, on a Mac, if you will hit option, it's control on a Windows, uh, you will, you can define the mask, right? So it'll default as this white sheet, essentially, that covers your entire image. Um, but as long as you're holding control or option, it, as you slide it, you can start to reduce that mask and keep it confined to just the areas that you want to confine to. When you start to add the sharpening, uh, don't go too crazy with it. Right? You can get you can get pretty off with the sharpening. So just a little bit. Lightroom's typically uh, defaults to about forty. I don't go much higher than that. Right? Uh, noise reduction. Lightroom does a decent job at noise reduction, and noise is something that we're going to combat and deal with in in nighttime photography. Uh, but again, don't. Don't go too over the, the top with this noise reduction. Because if I if I drive the luminance noise reduction all the way to 100, you can see as I start to lose details on the Milky Way and the sky and the image as a whole, it gets real muddy and, and murky and looks like a, a watercolor. So I don't ever want to drive it all the way up to the top of the slider. Somewhere around the 35 range, 35 on your color, noise reduction, that's usually a pretty good range, depending on your image and how you shot it. Under the lens correction tab, I always make sure I want to remove chromatic aberration. And you can click enable profile correction. Guys, I'll be honest with you, sometimes this looks good and it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll click it and yeah, we get a lot of vignetting at the top. Uh, some of the colors are really blown out. It doesn't it doesn't work really well for this image, so I will not I will not choose to enable profile correction. I'm gonna leave it just as it is. All right, so back at the top here with our main sliders. Uh, again, small adjustments, right? So you know, adjust the image to see how how you fit, right? If you want to increase a little bit of the highlights. Um, when you start bringing up shadows, understand that you know we're, we're shooting at night, long exposures, higher ISOs. If we start lifting shadows too much, we're going to start bringing in some more noise and grain in the image. Uh, blacks are really going to affect your night sky as well as any shadows in your image, so be cautious there. Texture, the texture and the clarity sliders. Uh, they're fun to mess around with. You'll see the effects, uh, but there's too much of a good thing, and especially if we're talking about wanting to print your images. So be judicious on your, your texture and your clarity sliders. Uh, it's tempting to go really high, and I'll show you what happens there. Uh, that's tech clarity uh, at 100, and... It looks okay, right? If that's if that's the effect you're going for, you may think it looks pretty good. Uh, but if you wanted to turn around and print this above eight by ten, eleven by fourteen, maybe uh, it's not going to look very good because of the over sharpening effect that the clarity gives you at at a hundred or all the way at the top of the slider. Dehaze is a little useful in small doses. Uh, it, it really adds a bit more contrast in uh, if you increase the dehaze. Uh, but again, here you go all the way at the top. Uh, you drive too much of that dehaze into the image and it becomes a little, little strange looking. So 
Again, small doses here. Everything in small doses. I'm pretty happy with that. I do like a little vibrancy in my image. Uh, and I usually don't mess with saturation much. And if I do mess with it, it's to reduce the saturation. All right, so those are my global edits, and I'm looking pretty happy with this. So my tone curve, this is a very good way to add some good contrast to your image. And what this tone curve is in the background, you'll see a grayed out histogram. You'll see how it matches this histogram up here for the most part. Uh, so if I take this slider and I pick a point on the edge of my histogram and I start driving it up or down, you can see the effect that it has. And a small, tiny little S curve will do wonders for your image. So I've, I've gone up here. So I'll come up further up the line and I'll drag down just a touch. So I start to see the effect I like, and I like that thing. Right? So just a small, tiny little S-curve. Again, some images need to be a little bit different. Uh, maybe yours at home, touch different. But for this image, a very, very minimal S-curve works wonders here for me. So I want to take, now that I'm looking at the image, I want to take just a little bit more saturation out of the oranges. Not much. I'm going to drop lessen it down to negative 10. And I'm going to cool it off just a little bit more. So I'm going to take it down to 4,400. Okay, good. That's starting to have the effect I want. Awesome. Now, let's talk about adjustment brushes. So up here in the upper right-hand corner, right underneath your histogram, you've got a, a line of tools here. Uh, far to the right is your adjustment brush. So if you click on adjustment brush, it'll bring up a whole new panel of sliders and your reticle will change to the circular reticle uh, with a inner circle, an outer circle, and a crosshair in the middle. Right? So first I'm going to start by setting my, my reticle up appropriately. So my size uh, you can control it by the slider, or you can use your bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of your slider. The feather is the outer circle, and that determines how soft or hard the, the mask is that you're painting, essentially. And the flow is the intensity of the mask that you're painting. So... Uh, usually, I will keep things about 50 or between 50 and 70, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, I never like to go straight up to 100 all the way over the top uh, with my mask. So, I'll put it at 65. Yeah, there we go. And so, I noticed there's a, a few areas here on this rock face that I kind of want to bring out. And I'm going to use this adjustment brush to do it. So first, I'm going to set my exposure um, just up to, yeah, 0 0.6, 0 0.50, whatever, 0 0.48. That works. Really, what I'm going to do is just see where I'm painting. Okay? You guys, I'm using a Wacom tablet, a pen tablet here for this part. Uh, it's extremely uh, more intuitive to do this, I've found with a, with a Wacom tablet than a, than a pen. So if you, if you haven't gotten a pen and a tablet before, uh, you might want to invest. It makes it a lot easier to edit your photos. So the shadowy parts of this hoodoo, I'm just going to start to paint it in here. And don't worry about going over the lines too much or over the, the confines of the, the hoodoo or your image or whatever you're trying to paint in because... Uh, Lightroom is fairly intuitive and it tries to keep the mask that you're painting uh, just within the boundaries of that center uh, circle and the crosshairs of the reticle. So to see what you just painted, if you come down here to show selected mask overlay and click that, it'll 
highlight in red on your image uh, exactly what you just did. Now, it makes it difficult to leave that on there and to see what you're doing with the image. So once you see it, you understand where your mask is, go ahead and click that off. And now we can start to manipulate these sliders and these sliders will only affect the areas that I have just created a mask on. So we can see if I really drive the exposure up, uh, it, it is only confined to the area that I just painted. So that's, that's a bit much. I'm going to bring that back down. And we might have increased the shadows just a touch. Don't need to mess with the contrast. If you add any more clarity at this point, understand we've already added clarity on the, in the global adjustments. So now this is on top of the global adjustments. So be, be leery about that. Bring it back up just a touch. There we go. Cut. Okay, I am happy with that. I just really wanted to kind of subtly bring that out. I didn't want to do too much with it. But that's how you'd use an adjustment brush to, to address different areas uh, in your image if it needs it. And just remember, if you need to show see the area that you painted with the mask, show selected mask overlay. And you can always go in and add parts just by grabbing your, your tool and adding it in. Or if you've gone too far, too much, if you click erase, now the reticle changes. It has a minus sign, and you can set this, the feather and flow for the eraser side. And you can go ahead and clean that, that mask up. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my adjustment brush again. So I'm going to click it again. But now I am going to focus on the Milky Way, the star of the image, so to speak. So with a new adjustment brush, you can see the pinhead right there. That's an inactive pinhead for our old adjustment brush that we just did. Uh, I could click on that and go back and adjust it uh, if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it just like it is. So new adjustment brush. I'm going to increase the size just a little bit, and I'm going to paint just over my Milky Way. And you see how I, I, I left show selected mask overlay checked. Now it's, it's showing that red as I paint over, which, you know, that's something you like. You're more than welcome to do that. Uh, it's, your, it's your image, your world. So and I'm just going to paint it in. And this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And in fact, you don't want it to be absolutely perfect. Uh, it needs to be a little scraggly on the edges. It'll look better in the long run. So I will uncheck show select, select the mask overlay. And I started out with a default exposure uh, increase of 0.48. As I start to go through these sliders, you'll see the effect. And again, we're only focusing on just the Milky Way. So when I do this, when I edit my images, my goal is to just bring the Milky Way out from the sky just a little bit, nothing too over the top, nothing too crazy, but it's your image. Whatever makes you happy in your world, do it. Um, I, I encourage you to play with these sliders. If you like funky, crazy colors in the Milky Way, cool. I've seen great images like that. Uh, if you like more scientific colors, great. That's, that's your... That is your prerogative, and I encourage you to do it because this truly is the artistic side of the editing process. So uh, temperature, we'll make it cooler or warmer, whichever. And you can see the effects that you're having there. I tend to, to lean a little bit more towards the scientific colors, so I will go just a little bit warmer, and I won't go into much of the, the, the greens or anything like that. I might add a bit of magenta in on the tint. Contrast, I think contrast is important because it, there's so many details in the Milky Way, the, the gases and, and the nebulas and whatnot. So I will use a fairly good amount of contrast 
on top of what we've already done globally. Highlights, I usually don't mess with them much. Um, small doses on the highlights because you can start to blow those out fairly easily. Shadows, I like to drop the shadows some because that just helps the contrast, helps it really stand out from that, that sky. Uh, whites are not that, that big of a deal because if I start to drive them down, I'm going to start to lose some of the whites. And I don't really want to lose the whites. So I'll mess with the blacks some, uh, but if I start messing with the blacks, I'm going to start to really darken the whole band of Milky Way. I don't necessarily want to do that. Texture. Again, this is one of those things that if you drive it too high, it's it may look cool on your, your screen, but when you go to print, it's, it's not going to look so great. So a little bit of texture, a little bit of clarity goes a really long way. And of course, the saturation, you, and you can get crazy with saturation. You can really drive those colors up, um, or you can start to reduce them down. Uh, I will increase it just a touch, and that is starting to look pretty darn good for me. All right, so now that I've gotten my edits on the Milky Way to a point where I'm happy with them, I will hit close here, close that adjustment brush, and now I'm back to my main global adjustment panels here. Um, the next thing that I want to do, just looking at this particular image, uh, I'm going to use a gradient tool and I'm just going to darken the lower half and kind of lead the viewer in just a bit. So to use my gradient tool, the gradient tool is the icon that is almost dead center of this, this toolbar here. So I am going to click on the gradient tool and I'm going to drop the exposure. I'll drop it down to negative 0.55. And now I'm going to take this crosshair and drag from the bottom of my image up. And stop it just about there, making sure it's straight across. And now I can use this, these sliders to adjust the gradient. And everything will, will be in a gradient from the bottom up towards the top line where I stop the the gradient act. I can continue this all the way up the image, uh, but that's not what I'm going for here. So I just kind of want to drop that exposure some, and I may even reduce a little saturation. I may cool it down just a touch, just to kind of blend it in. If I feel like I need to extend my gradient, I can grab that and drag it up and get the effect I, I'm going for. Excellent. All right. Okay, so now the last thing that I want to do is I want to change the crop. So I need to drag this from the top just a bit and I want to change the composition just, just a little bit. Right there. Good. Good. And that's an image that I am happy with. And there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching my quick tutorial on how to edit your photos solely in Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until next time, guys, take care.